Hey guys, Chris with RC Worst here, and today we're bringing you another video. Today, talking about the pump switches or control switches, or both. Really, we're talking about the difference between pump switches and control switches. So, it's definitely in the name when we're talking about the two. A pump switch is intended for the direct control of a pump or a motor, really. Uh, a control switch has to interface with some sort of a controller in order to actually engage or disengage the pump, and that's typically done through like a contact or some other means such as that. So when we're talking about some of the major differences between pump switches and control switches, pump switches generally have a wide angle or a wider range of travel for the float and that's because they're trying to accomplish the cycle. So uh, generally speaking, and we've got one right here, the float switch will float up and then engage and then it travels all the way down to turn back off. And that's a completely different story with a control switch. A control switch generally is uh, a lot shorter range of travel and uh, it's going to engage or disengage uh, with very little movement. So that's uh, one of the biggest differences between, in general, control switches and uh, pump switches. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is control switches typically use pretty small wire and uh, they're not intended to handle the amperage of a motor or the direct amperage of a motor, whereas a uh, pump switch, those uh, are available from SJE Rhombus, the manufacturers who we offer, offer and represent. They are available up to 18 amps or 18 and a half amps, I think they're, um, It'll, it'll show right there. There are some instances, however, that a pump switch can be used as a control switch, specifically if you're looking for a switch that needs more travel before it engages and disengages. There are a lot of applications such as reservoir filling applications, cisterns, and so forth, where you want to have more travel but don't necessarily want to have a bunch of float switches to do that. So it's a great uh, method to just use a control switch. On the topic of tether length and float travel and so forth with a pump control switch, the longer this tether, uh, the more travel that float switch is gonna have. So that of course makes pump control switch is a little more susceptible to getting hung up with other floats or objects in the tank, whereas a control switch typically only has a very short tether, uh, maybe an inch and a half to three inches. So there's a lot less movement and a lot less, a lot less chance of something going wrong. One notable thing about pump switches is they are generally offered with a piggyback configuration or a no plug configuration. Of course, we've all seen that piggyback before. That's the plug that then goes into a plug, this being the switch and this being the pump's power. Uh, it's real nice when you're doing some troubleshooting or anything like that. A control switch is only ever gonna be offered uh, with open wire like this because it's intended to be installed in a control panel. So keep that in mind when you're making your selections of a switch. Control switches are generally found in alarm boxes or in systems where you've got a control panel and then pump switches can basically be found anywhere. And there are even a lot of uh, control panel scenarios, again as I mentioned, that use wide angle floats because they're trying to limit the number of floats in the tank and uh, take advantage of that wide range of travel. So that's just a basic overview of the difference between pump switches and control switches. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.